Hey guys, Joe back at it once again with some A-level further maths topics and today we're going to be talking about recurrence relation and matrix induction. So, if you haven't seen the first episode on, uh, or the first lesson on uh, induction, then that was the last lesson and I would highly recommend checking that out before checking this video out because it's a very, very intense subject and we're going to be going at a little bit of a faster pace today um, just to get through things. So. Uh, the learning objective for today is to understand how to prove a recurrence relation and matrix sequences for every possible number. So we learned last lesson that we can prove things via induction. Uh, we know that there's five very, very clear steps to success when we are faced with those problems. So step one, check it works for one. Step two, let the case be true. Step three, set yourself a target. Step four, look at the k plus one's term. And step five, tell the world you've done it. We're going to look at three other types of problems that can be proven with induction using the same five steps. A uh, bit of an animation glitch there. We can use uh, proof by induction to prove that, the, that an expression is divisible by a particular integral. So let's try an example. Proof by induction that 3 to the 2n plus 11 is always divisible by 4 for n is a member of the positive real integers. So step one, check it works for one, let n equal one. Uh, so three to the two times one plus 11 equals 20, because it's obviously three squared at 11, which is nine at 11, which is 20. So 20 is divisible by four, and therefore we say it works for one. Step two, let the case be true. So remember that is where we rewrite our um, nth statement and put in a k instead. But we say that it equals 4q, because if it's divisible by 4, it must be a multiple of 4. So q is a member of the real uh, numbers. So 3 to the 2k plus 11 equals 4q. So that is the secret with these ones. If it's divisible by 9, it would be 9q uh, divisible by 3, 3q, and etc. So 4q is the algebra for a multiple of 4. Step three, set yourself a target. We don't need a target in this type of proof because we're simply proving that's a multiple of four. We've already got the target, basically. So proof by induction that, um, and we've got that little bit of algebra at the top. So step four, look at the k plus one's term. We still need this. So we simply paste in a k plus one where we see a k. So it's three to the two k plus one plus 11. And well, of this, by the way, uh, uh, I must stress that. I don't think I've made that uh, clear. We don't use the kth statement. We use the original function. So we put k plus 1 for an n because k plus 1 is the stopping point. <coughs> Pardon me. So 3 to the 2k plus 2 plus 11. Using power laws, we can weasel in a 3 to the 2k here. And that's good because we have a 3 to the 2k here. And you might be able to see where this is going. So that is the same as 3 to the 2k times 3 squared, using power laws, uh, plus 11. And 3 squared is 9, so it's 9 lots of 3 to the 2k plus 11. But 3 to the 2k can be replaced by 4q minus 11, because we take him over the other side, and we do that. So there you go. Now you just expand, like that tidy up see if you can weasel out a 4 you can so it's 4 times 9q minus 22 and anything multiplied by 4 is a multiple of 4, multiple of four so it's therefore divisible by 4 and if it's true for n equals k then it's true for n equals k plus 1 therefore via induction it is true for any positive uh, real integer and I'll be back in just a second. Sorry about that little interruption, guys. Let's get on with the lesson. So we can also, uh, well, I should say, oh, sorry. We can also use proof by induction to produce a proof of a recurrent sequence or inductive sequence that you usually learn in core one. So if you haven't seen that, there's plenty of videos online uh, if you want to uh, see what that's all about. So let's try an example. Uh, given that UN plus 1 equals 3un plus 4, where u1 is 1, 
Prove by induction that un equals 3 to the n minus 2. <coughs> so, here we go. Check uh, that works for 1 and 2. Because remember, we need n plus 1 and we need n. So here we go. So let n equal 1. Therefore, u1 equals 3 to the 1 minus 2, which is 1. And we are told that u1 is 1 up here. Uh, let n equal 2, so u of 1 plus 1, which is 2, equals 3 times 1 plus 4, which equals 7. So it works for 1 and 2. So, here we go. Uh, step 2, let the kth statement be true. So, uk equals 3 to the k, minus 2. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, u2 is 3 squared minus 2 up here, uh, which equals 7 as well. So, that's why it works for 1 and 2 if you're a bit confused. Uh, step 3, set yourself a target. So, uk plus 1 equals 3 to the k plus 1 minus 2. So that's just replacing any k's that you see with a k plus 1. Look at the k plus 1's term. Well, we are given the generator for a uk plus 1. Because if we think about that as k plus 1, then that must be a k here. And we know what a uk is, because we've made with inductive hypothesis. So we can replace this uk here. I've put modulus around it by accident. This uk you can replace with a 3 to the k minus 2. So we do that. Therefore, 3 to the k plus 1 equals 3 to the k plus 1 minus 6 plus 4. Just expanding. So therefore, uk plus 1 equals 3 to the k plus 1 minus 2. And that means we've met with target because that matches that. So step five, tell the world that you've done it and it's just the same statement over and over again. So that's uh, inductive, um, well, recur recurrence relation induction, I think that's what it's called. Um, they are inductive sequences but you don't want to use induct twice in a sentence do you? Uh, we can also use proof by induction to prove uh, a general statement involving matrix multiplication. So let's try an example. So use mathematical induction to prove that uh, 1 minus 1, 0, 2, all to the n equals 1, 1 minus 2 to the n, 0, 2 to the n. So these are a little bit more complicated, but we'll go with it. So step 1, check it works for 1. So let n equal 1, and on the LHS... We've got all of that to the 1, which is simply itself. On the right-hand side, we we'll stick a 1 where we we'll see an n, and we end up with the same thing, so it works for 1. Let the kth statement be true. Uh, so we'll replace anywhere we we'll see with an n with a k. So this is now our kth statement. So step 3, set yourself a target. Well, that's just going to be the kth statement. Uh, statement with k plus 1's in there and we'll stick that in a box on the right hand side so step 4 look at the k plus 1's term isn't that just the kth term but remember with power laws uh, are we going to be crafty with that yep there we go using power laws k plus 1 uh, as a power is just k times k no no sorry it's k times the thing to the 1, so that to the 1, and then it will be k plus 1. Obviously, if it was times k, it would be uh, 2k, I believe. Power laws? Yeah, well, we'll go with that, because it would be k plus k. Never mind, right? So there we go. We've, we've, we've got that at the moment. So uh, if we power load that up, it would be the matrix to the k plus 1, which is that, because remember... This here can be replaced with our kth statement, which is this. So we paste that in there. And then we multiply out like any normal matrix and we get that. And then we tidy up and we get that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our target. 
because that is the same as that. And therefore, if it's true for n equals k, then it's true for n equals k plus 1. And therefore, via induction, it's true for n equals any number that's real and positive. And there we go. So, it might not have been completely clear, um, you know, the inductive sequence or the matrix one, if you haven't studied matrices or um, inductive sequence before. So, go and check those out and then come back to this video, maybe. Um, but hopefully you found it helpful. Leave a like down below if you did. Uh, leave your comments down below in the comments. And uh, yeah, thank you very, very much for watching. Thanks for watching and goodbye.